about God's blessing. So let's come together now. Everyone gather around. Grab the ones that you love and sing. We wish you.
family We wish you a Merry Christmas Purihin ka, Panginoon, sa inyong kabutihan. Purihin ka sa iyong kadakilaan. Tunay nga po, O Diyos, ang aming panalangin ay kami iyong pagpalain at higit po sa pagpapala niya sa amin, kayo ay aming purihin, sambahin, luwalhatiin. Dahil ito po ang karapat-dapat ninyong dapat tinatanggap dahil kayo po ay karapat-dapat na purihin. 
Sa mga oras na ito, nagpapasalamat po kami muli sa pagkakataon na inyong pinagkalob sa amin na makapag-worship uh, sa inyo at makapag-aaral po muli ng iyong mga salita. Dalangin namin sa araw na ito, ang pangalan nyo lamang ang mapapurihan, ang pangalan nyo lamang ang mabigyan ng kalawalhatian at higit sa lahat, ang pangalan nyo lamang Panginoon ang may tanghal sa aming kalagitnaan. Cleanse us and forgive us from all sins so that our lives will become a powerful vessel of honor that will advance the kingdom on earth to extend your territory and to establish your rulership in the lives of every person. Salamat po muli. I pray that those who are sick, I declare healing in the name of Jesus. And those who are in pain right now, I pray, Lord God, for your divine healing and touch over their lives. I decree that those that every pain will disappear in the name of Jesus. And also, Father God, I pray na patuloy ninyong pagkilos, Panginoon, sa bawat isa, lalo na sa mga mayroong pangailangan. I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that every needs will be met because you are our great provider. And those who are uh, confused right now, in need of peace, you said in your word, my peace I give to you, it's the peace that the world cannot give. I pray that the peace from God that passeth all human understanding will flow over your life together with your family. This is our declaration. And Lord, from the beginning till the end of this study, speak to us in a very powerful way. And I pray that the plans and purposes that you have in your life, as you said in Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. We bless you, we worship you, and we glorify your name in all the earth. To you alone the glory, honor, and praise, now and forevermore. And all the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, kumusta po kayong lahat? Sa mga kabubukas pa lamang ng kanilang Facebook, live rin po tayo ngayon sa YouTube. Good morning everyone and may the grace of God, may the love and peace of God be upon you all. Praise God. At purihin po ang Panginoon sa magandang balita po sa Metro Manila. We are now in the herd immunity and praise the Lord. Uh, nakaraan ho, ang aking napanood sa TV, wala na hong 400 yung infected. So praise God. But again, uh, as people of the living God, we should be uh, mindful that uh, even though na ito yung uh, kasalukuyang kalalagayan, again, let us be uh, mindful and uh, careful to observe uh, safety protocols. Always wear your face mask and then uh, palagi rin po mag-observe ng social distancing and always uh, wash your hands. So mahalaga po ito mga kapatid because ang bantaho ng virus ay nariyan pa rin sa ating kapaligiran. So it doesn't mean na nasa level 2 na ho tayo or uh, so, uh, soon maging level 1 but again the safety reminders, safety protocols must be observed especially by the people of God. Let us be modeled. Okay, let us be the model of this uh, safety protocols observation eh, no? para makita ho ng iba na mayroon pong gumagawa nito. Okay? So, as we move on to our study, we are still in the series of winning the battle from the inside out. So, we've discussed already last Sunday eh, no? uh, the biblical principles or biblical prescription of how to defeat the flesh. For we've discovered, eh, no? nakita po natin na ang ating laman ang pinaka-worst enemy na meron tayo. One thing I know, uh, ang ating laman ho, at uh, aking inobserbahan talaga yung mga great men of God in the Bible, uh, they have one thing in common, ano? bakit sila nag-fall? Bakit nag-fall si David? Bakit nag-fall si Samson? Bakit nang hina si Elijah? Bakit nang hina yung ibang propeta? They have one thing in common. Ano po ito? Even the kings of Israel, one thing in common, the flesh. Okay. And laging tandaan, the flesh is no respecter of your spiritual stature. Even how strong you are in the spirit, even how established your ministry is, or ministries are, if you do not overcome, if you do not overcome the desires of the flesh, the flesh is just waiting for a time na kung saan ikaw 
ay kanyang mabibiktima. That is why I can boldly declare this to you, mga kapatid, the only contact point of the world and the devil in the life of a person, whether he is a believer or not, is none other than his flesh. That is why pinag-uusapan natin na si David, kahit man after God's own heart, hindi siya nakaligtas sa pita ng laman. Samson, pinakamalakas na tao, di rin siya nakaligtas sa pita ng laman. And so on and so forth, marami hong mga hari nagsimula ng tama Si Saul, di rin nakaligtas sa pita ng laman. Pride of life. Maging ang ibang mga tao na kasama ni Kristo, si Judas kasama ni Kristo, pita ng laman. The greed. Nakita niyo? So this flesh is very dangerous. And I want you to understand that as long as you live on earth, hindi mo pwedeng i-detach ang flesh mo sa buhay mo. Because the accurate definition of death is the separation of your body and spirit. Body, speaking of the flesh. So hanggat buhay ka, ang struggle mo sa flesh mo magpapatuloy. But today, the Lord is so good to us, He had given us the opportunity to understand that the flesh, although this is our worst enemy, but we have the power because we can do all things through Christ and through the Word of Christ and through the leading of, the, of God, Holy Spirit, we can make this flesh subject to the authority of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.23-24 to 24, For God Himself will sang, may God Himself sanctify you through and through your whole spirit, soul, and body, the flesh. Faithful is He who calls you and He will do it. 1 Thessalonians 5.23-24 to 24, So what does it mean? There is a big possibility, there is a very huge chance na ang iyong flesh ay pwede talagang mapangunahan at pwede rin siyang magiging katuwang natin sa ating paglilingkod sa Diyos. And this is good news. But again, it doesn't mean na kasama mo na sarili mo, nagilingkod ka na sa Diyos, nakapasok ka na sa presensya ng Diyos, just like David, na ikaw ay magkukumpiyansa na. That is why, dapat intense palagi ang ating biblical uh, prescription, biblical uh, input. Kaya nga palagi sinasabi, di ba? You become what you eat. If you keep on partaking the now word of God, if you keep on partaking messages that will not tolerate our fleshly desires, that will not tolerate people from committing sin, what will happen? Lalong nasa sharpen, lalong tumitining ang iyong righteousness, lalong nasa sharpen, lalong tumitining ang iyong holiness. Nagkanoan po tayo. The more we become holy, the more we become righteous, the more we be, we do, we're doing right, the right things in our lives. What comes next? The heavens will open, the Holy Spirit can freely and powerfully move, and we will going to live a life pleasing before God. So praise the Lord for this. Nagkanoan po tayo, mga kapatid. So this is the reason why people especially, specifically believers, are having a hard time. So today, the, this message is very relevant for all of us, believers of the living God, even people who do not uh, still surrender you, their lives to God, mahalaga ho ito. Because this is a one-of-a-kind uh, message that will help you overcome the desires of the flesh and begin to subject or submit yourself to the leading of God, Holy Spirit. So let us now study what are the biblical prescriptions on how to defeat the flesh. Uh -huh. Number one, deny it. If you want to follow me, deny yourself, sabi ng Panginoon. Self-denial is one of the biblical prescriptions. Na ipag-ibig sabihin, the moment your flesh desired something, just deny it. Ibig sabihin, wag natin pagbigyan. At yun ang sabi ng Panginoon. That if you want to follow me, deny yourself. That's the first requirement. That is why kung marami yung mananampalataya is a self-denial pa lang, sablay na. That is why you need the Word of God. Palagi ka nakikinig ng salita ng Diyos, pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos na hindi nagtutulirate sa iyong pagkakamali. Bagkos ikaw ay tinutuwid, yan ang mga mensahe na dapat mong pakinggan. Pangalawa, crucify the flesh and its desires. Galatians 5.24 At pinatay na ng mga nakipag-isa kay Kristo, ang lahat ng pita ng laman at ang lahat ng lumang pagkataon nito. If anyone is in crisis, a new creation. 
the oldest gone, behold, the new has come. How would it happen? By crucifying the flesh. When, the, when you speak about crucifixion, it means death. Lahat ng kinrucify sa cross namatay, including our Lord Jesus Christ. So ano ibig ko sabihin? We must be dead to self and die to sin. Okay, crucifixion or crucifying the flesh simply means giving up your rights, surrendering your will to God's will, giving up your freedom for the glory of God. Marami yung nagsasabi, pag naging mananampalatay, ako maging born again, ako maging kristyano, bakit? Hindi na ako malaya. Alam niyo mga kapatid, yan ay malaking kasinungalingan ni Satanas. Ang tunay na kalayaan ay nasa kamay ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. If you surrender your life fully to God, then you are totally free because the one who the one who will set you free is God Himself. But the moment you do not allow yourself to be placed in the hands of God and you do not believe Him as your Lord and personal Savior, feeling mo lang malaya ka, pero ikaw ay nakakulong sa haula ng kasalanan at yung kasalanan na yan, maniningil sa iyo ng maraming consequences na pag dumating sa iyo, kailanman hindi mo magugustuhan. Okay? Number three, live for God's cause and God's sake. Another prescription of the Word of God is the reason of our existence. Mahalaga ho na malaman natin, what is the reason of our existence? Galatians 2.20 I've been crucified with Christ, but I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh or in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. If you're a believer of Christ watching me right now, you should know the reason of your existence. Because the moment you were redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, at ikay sumampalataya sa Kanya, nagkaroon na ho ng bagong gobyerno sa buhay mo. At ang pinaka-presidente o hari ng buhay mo is no longer yourself. Yourself must be dethroned and let God, the one who saved you on the cross, must be enthroned. And who is He? The Lord Jesus Christ. So anong, anong reason ng ating existence? Anong reason? Bakit ba pa tayo ngayon? To live for Christ. To live for His glory. To live for His honor. To live for His, uh, for His sake and for His cause. Letter D, offer your lives or offer ourselves to God. What does it mean? If you want to defeat the flesh, surrender it totally to God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So malinaw ho, the moment you surrender to the lordship or the authority of one person, anong gagawin mo? You are now under His disposal. Anong gusto gawin ng Diyos sa buhay natin? Yun ang ating hayaan. Anong gusto ng Diyos ipagawa sa atin? Yun ang ating gagawin. At ito ang katotohanan na madalas or kadalasan talaga hindi naintindihan ng maraming mananampalataya. They thought that if, surrender, if they surrender their lives to God today, then they can take it tomorrow. That is totally wrong. Because the moment you surrender your life to God, it should be a surrender for a lifetime. As long as you breathe, you are under God's disposal and you are under the authority of God. Letter E. Be a slave of righteousness, not allowing any part of our body to be used by the enemy to commit sin. Tinubos tayo ng Panginoon sa kasalanan at karapat dapat lamang na huwag natating balikan ng kasalanan kasi ang dahilan kung bakit ang anak ng tao, ang anak ng Diyos na buhay ay namatay sa krus ng kalbaryo dahil sa kasalanan mo at kasalanan ko. Kung malinaw lang sana ito sa bawat mananampalataya, na nakikinig sa akin ngayon, please pakishare niyo to sa iba para maintindihan po ng lahat. Niligtas tayo ni Kristo ang dahilan kung bakit si Kristo na walang kasalanan, nagkatawang tao at namatay sa krusang kalbaryo para bayaran ang kasalanan nating lahat ng mga tao na nabuhay dito sa lupa. So once you got saved, once you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, what comes next? A life living in holiness and righteousness, not in sinfulness, not in wickedness. That is why mabagal ang proseso ng maturity, mabagal ang proseso ng paglago ng maraming mananampalataya because they still allow themselves to be deceived, to be fooled by the devil, believing in their hearts, believing in their minds that they are a believer of Christ, they are, a Christ, they are Christians, but committing sin without any conviction, that is very dangerous. So ano ang dapat principle mo sa buhay mo? Our lives should be exclusively for God's use only. Why? Because it is not the world, it is not the devil, it is not any person, but it was the Lord Jesus Christ who saved us from the, from the power of sin and who gives us eternal life. Therefore, 
We are exclusively for His use only. What God wants us to do, we will do. Letter F, live in holiness. This is God's divine calling to all His people. If you want to defeat the flesh, because the flesh hate to live in holiness, because what the flesh desires is to live in sinfulness. You want to defeat the flesh? Follow what the Word of God says. 1 Peter 1, 5, 15 to 16, But just as He called you as holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. This is imperative. Living a holy life is non-negotiable before God. That is why marami ho ang nagtuturo, hindi ho nila ito tinuturo ng totoo at puro. Bakit? Because they have this uh, contaminated mindset or understanding that nobody in this world can be holy. That is wrong. Why? Because when God tells us, be holy for I am holy, ibig sabihin, alam ng Diyos na hindi natin kaya maging banal. That is why meron siyang ginawa. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 to 8, watch me now. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. This is our calling as believers of Christ. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being. But God, the very God who gives us His Holy Spirit. That is why living a life of holiness and righteousness is no longer an issue. It is no longer a difficult time, a difficult thing. Why? Because God had already given us and deposited in us His God Holy Spirit. What's the work of God Holy Spirit? The name per se. The name itself says Holy Spirit. What is work? What is job? To make us holy before God so that God will be able to work in us to will and to act in order for us to fulfill His good purpose. Nagkaunawaan po tayo. Bakit ganun ang Diyos kaigting at ganun siya, ka, ganun katindi ang kanyang pagnanasan at ay mabuhay sa kabanalan upang siya ay makagawa at makakilo sa ating buhay para tuparin at gawin ang lahat ng kanyang mabubuting layunin para sa ating buhay. And one of those is Jeremiah 29.11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope and a future. Malinaw po, mga kapatid. Pangalawa, if the moment we live a life of holiness and righteousness, living a life pleasing before God, God is able to turn the table and to our favor. And we know that in all things, God works for the good to those who love Him and to those who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8, 28. Nakita niyo ho yung advantage. The moment we defeat the flesh, the moment we live according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we walk with God, Holy Spirit, what will happen? Even unfavorable situations, pwede nang Diyos pihitin at gawing favorable sa atin. In the world, what they see is adversity. But in the people of God who live a life of holiness, who walk through the leading of God, Holy Spirit, adversity in the world is an opportunity for us. Nagkakanawan po tayo? Yung adversity, katulad ng pandemic, to them it is an adversity. But for us, believers of the living God, living a holy life, living a righteous life, walking with God, Holy Spirit, defeating the flesh and allowing the Spirit to take full control, what happened? This is an opportunity for us to demonstrate the power of God the people are shouting, crisis already. But in the economy of heaven, there is no such thing as crisis. There is only abundance. And the people who live according to the principles of God's word, according to the will of God, living a life of holiness and righteousness, they will never experience crisis. But rather, they will experience abundance. And that abundance will become a testimony in the world that the God whom we serve is a powerful God, a faithful God, and a true God that He will never forsake His people nor leave them. At dito nila makikita and they will be attracted to our lives because our lives is full of powerful testimonies that will enlighten them that life without God is useless. Makita po natin, a life of holiness will enable us to see God. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. My friends, mga kapatid, Isang malinaw ho na pangungusap sa ating lahat. And I pray that you will open your spirit today. Living a life of holiness for us human beings is impossible. But it is an imperative, non-negotiable command from God. Be holy for I am holy. 
So what are we going to do? On our own, we can do nothing. Pero ang sabi ng Panginoon, I will send the Holy Spirit. And in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, He deposited the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing our, our inheritance from God. What is our inheritance? To access the power of heaven. An inheritance in the Spirit is simply accessing the power of heaven, accessing the resources of heaven, accessing all the heavens that are about to, that are able to provide for us. The keys, uh, uh, yung inheritance serves as the keys of the kingdom. Kung ano ang kailangan natin dito sa lupa upang marilis at magbukas ang langit sa atin, then God, the Holy Spirit, is able to provide it for us. That is why holiness is a must. It is not an option. It is a must. And it is non-negotiable. It is imperative and it is. It should be. It should be done. Else, no one will see the Lord. I hope na clear sa atin yan. And that is one divine prescription in the Bible that will enable us to defeat the flesh. For so Christ's likeness. Another prescription in order for us to defeat the flesh, letter G, is to pursue Christ's likeness. It is our ultimate goal in Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. Why Christ's likeness? Because only the Lord Jesus Christ was able to defeat the devil, He was able to defeat the world, and He was able to defeat the flesh. Kaya Christ's likeness, so it is not the likeness of any person, it is not the likeness of any organization, but it is only Christ's likeness. And if all of us lives like Jesus, or like the Lord Jesus Christ, what happened? Then we will be victorious like Him. Christ's likeness is an imperative or it is a clear manifestation that we really belong to God. First John 2, 6, whoever claims to live in Him. Sino man nagsasabing sila'y nabubuhay sa Diyos o sa piling ng Diyos must live as Jesus did. Clear as crystal po, mga kapatid. We can never claim and boldly declare that we belong to God if we do not live like the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is a very concrete example. He lived a life pleasing to the Father. He obeyed the Father until death or till death. He carried the cross without any complaint, no murmuring, no grumbling. And He finished the work. He finished the work and his food is to do the will of his father. First John 4, 17, it says, This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Why we need to live and pursue Christ's likeness so that in the day of judgment, we will never be afraid. In this world, we are like Jesus. Kung ikaw ay naging mananampalataya, at ang pattern ng buhay mo ay pattern pa rin sa mundo at yung dati mong pagkatao, you are too far from reality of Christianity. Ulitin ko. The moment your life is too far and never reflected the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you keep on declaring that you're a Christian, your life is too far from the reality of Christianity. Para ho malinaw at hindi na ho tayo magpapalagay. Ang tawag dyan, assume or assuming. Maraming assuming, di ba, sa mga panlilikaw, nagkatinginan lang sila, nagkangitian lang, inassume na niya na sila na. Ni wala nga pag-uusap. Ganun na maraming mananampalataya. These are, this is, this is what happened in the book of Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Mga assuming believers. Ang sabi ng Pinas sa Matthew 7.21, hindi lahat ang tumatawag sa akin Panginoon, Panginoon ay papasok sa karya ng langit, kundi yaon lamang gumagawa ng kalooban ng aking amang nasa langit. At sa araw na yaon, marami ang magsasabi. Verse 22, nangaral po kami sa iyong pangalan. Kami po'y nagpalaya sa mga demonyo sa iyong pangalan. Humahayo po kami, tagpapagaling ng mga may sakit, gumawa ng himala. They assume that they will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the Lord said in Matthew 7.23, Lumayas kayo sa harapan ko, hindi ko kay kilala mapagawa ng masama. Look at the statement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Totoo ba talagang hindi kilala? Watch me now. Kasi hindi pwede magsinungaling ang Diyos. 
Pag sinasabi niyang hindi kilala, ibig sabihin, not counted ang lahat ng ginagawa kahit gaano pa spectacular yung iyong miracles, gaano pa spectacular yung mga, yung mga ginawa mo paghayo at pagpapalaya sa demonyo. If you are living your life according to the flesh, you're living a sinful life, mapagawa ng masama, then God will never mind what you are doing. Because what is important to God is not our ministry, but the life behind the ministry. What is important before God is not the years of service, but the life behind the years of service. My friends, it is the quality of our lives that God is after for. But others, other believers, they're hiding from their good works. They're hiding behind their good works, believing in themselves that they are pleasing God only to find out. They assume that God is pleased, but in reality, during the, the judgment, they will be the one to cry out. It's because God is not after our service, but is after the life behind our service. Mga kapatid, nawa ang katotohanan ng ito ay magdadala sa atin sa isang maliwanag ho na paglakad sa pamumay kristyano. Because this kind of message is seldom preached seldom heard. Wala na ho tayong magrinig kadalasan ng mga ganito. Ang mga naririnig natin, puro na lang panglaman na rin how to satisfy the flesh. Because other preachers, they just want to keep the people. My fellow preachers, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us not sugarcoat the messages of God. Let us preach the word of God as is. If it will hurt the people, then so be it. Why? Because we are not talking about our simple future. We're not talking about the, the, the attendance or the quantity of our church. We are talking about eternity, our eternal destiny. Anything that you have in this world, your big ministry, your big congregation, it will count into nothing if we do not able to raise up people and allow Him to reflect and live their lives according to the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, pursuing Christ's likeness. Palagi kong hamon sa lahat ng mga nakikinig. Kung kayo'y makikinig ng isang minsay, madali niyong malaman kung ang minsang inyo na pakinggan ay punong-puno ng sustansya at punong-puno ng kapangyarihan para magbago ng buhay. If that message or the one preaching that message only centered his message in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in his group, not in his organization, not in any person, but only in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will sense the essence, you will sense the power of that message because it will not just bless you, it will not just build you, but it will transform you the moment you do and apply the word that you're hearing from that preacher. I hope and pray that today the Lord disturb, the Lord shake, the Lord uh, do something powerful in your spirit. Because in the last days, the last, uh, the last uh, spirit that the devil will going to launch is the spirit of deception. That is why as early as possible, beginning today, late na nga today, eh, pero kung ngayon mo lang naintindihan, beginning today, connect yourself to a preacher, connect yourself to a minister with a cutting edge. Connect yourself to a minister with a cutting edge. A minister that will preach you, that will preach the now word to you, the relevant word to you, that will lead to your transformation. And a kind of preaching, or preaching that is centered only in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, about the deity of Christ, about the, the, the person of Christ, about the, about the examples of Christ, about the life of Christ, until one day, you will become like Christ and this is our ultimate destiny to live like Him. And the moment we live like Him, then the heavens will be open. The Holy Spirit can powerfully move and minister over our lives and we will live a pleasing life and with the, a life that is pleasing before God will keep the heavens open. Malinaw ha? Wag kayong assuming. Wag tayong assuming. Because kahit na gaano ka spectacular ang iyong nagawa para sa Diyos, the moment na mayroon tayong ginagawa na pagsuway sa kanyang kabanalan at katuwiran dahil sa pagbibigay natin daan sa ating laman, then that work will disqualify us in the day of judgment. Your spectacular ministry, your spectacular 
signs and wonders, miracles, display will not justify you. What will justify you in the day of judgment? A Christ-like life. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? Letter H, access the grace of God in the life of the carrier of your grace. So we've mentioned it already, one of the divine prescription or one of the biblical prescription for you to defeat the flesh is to access the grace in the life of your grace carrier. In the church, pag sinasabing grace carrier, the one who supply to you the now word, the one whom you listen, the one who gives you your spiritual nourishment. And in the church, that is none other than your pastor. The one you are partaking with. Every time he preached the word, every time he, he preached the now word of God, you're partaking of it and you are growing. Your, your spirit is being built. And then you grow in the spirit, you mature in the spirit. Na address yung mga inaccuracy sa buhay mo. That is how the grace of God operates. Ephesians 3, 2, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. If I am your pastor and you are my congregation, the grace that you need, what is grace? Unmerited favor, but another powerful meaning or definition of grace, it is God's power and ability working in you for you to become what God wants you to be. Another definition, it is God's power and ability working through you for you to do what God wants you to do. The grace of God will not just give us blessings, but it will empower us to fulfill our God-given assignment. And the good news is you will no longer need to go to heaven. You not long, no longer need to uh, kumbaga, get it under the sea, but it is deposited by God near you, close to you. And that is your pastor the carrier of your grace. The question is, how? By strongly and accurately connected to your pastor who is the carrier of your grace. And this is what the devil, this is the truth that the devil doesn't want us to know. Ayaw ng demonyo na malaman ito ng mga tao. That is why, ginagawa ng demonyo, tinuturuan yung mga tao, lalo na yung mga tamad sa salita ng Diyos na mag sa kanilang pastor. Watch me now. The moment you go against the carrier of your grace, you do not respect, you do not honor. Instead, you go against him. You are simply hurting yourself. Why? Because the Lord will never change his protocol. He will only minister and shepherd a believer or a person through a human shepherd. And that human shepherd which serves as your pastor in the spirit will carry God's grace that will enable you to do what God wants you to do and enable you to become what God wants you to be to reach your God-given destiny. Even your success is entrusted by God in the, to the hands of the carrier of your grace. Second Chronicles 20.20b 20, Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in His prophets and you will be successful. My friends, even success. Yung katatagan manggagaling sa Diyos. Pero yung katagumpayan, ibinigay na rin ng Diyos sa buhay ng carrier ng grace mo. You can just imagine, being connected, strongly connected, and strongly and accurately connected to our pastor, the carrier of our grace, will help you. Alam niyo to sinasabi ko, kayo na mga konektado sa inyong pastor, nagpapapray kayo, talagang nangyayari talaga, sinasagot ng Diyos ang panalangin ninyo. Bakit? Because your pastor is the authentic and authorized representative of God on earth for your life. The work of the pastor is he represents God to the people and he represents people to God. Yan ho ang trabaho ng priest o ng pastor. That is why mahalaga ho na maintindihan natin ito kasi marami ho mga mananampalataya para mga lone ranger they just live their lives on their own. Uh, attend sa church, makikinig. Then after that, walang kakunik-koneksyon sa pastor. They just live their lives on their own. Alam nyo ho, the safest place for a ship is to be in the presence of a shepherd. Once na yung ship ay nagsulo at hindi nagkokonekta 
at hindi sumusunod sa kanyang pastol. Lapa ang aabutin niya mula sa mga mababangis na hayop katulad ng leyon at mga lobo. But people, because of ignorance, my people perish because lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge simply means ignorance. And ignorance in the Greek or Hebrew, it means darkness. Kaya marami ho, madilim ang kaisipan, hindi nakakaintindi, anong ginagawa? They disconnect themselves. They just want blessings. They just want the message. Then after getting the message, they apply it on their own. No grace at all. Tandaan nyo, Tagalogin natin para mas maganda, no? Pag walang grasya, disgrasya. Kaya maraming mananampalataya, disgrasya ang buhay. And then asking God, Lord, where are you? Anong where are you? Never ang Diyos lumalayo. Ikaw ang lumalayo sa Diyos sa katigasan ng ulo mo. That is why mahalaga ho, one of the major prescription of the Bible, how to defeat the flesh, access the grace of God in the life of your grace carrier. Now, we've studied about the principle of connection. Paano bang establishment ng connection? Number one, connection to God. 2 Corinthians 8.5 And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord. Divine connection is very important. Kung mayroon ka mang connection, usong-uso rin kasi ang connection dito sa lupa, di ba? Di ba, pag tayo nag apply ng trabaho o mayroon tayong lalakarin papeles, palagi natin tinatanong, sino bang connection mo dyan? Ano ang purpose? Because if you have a connection, then hindi masyadong mahirap ang buhay mo. Because somebody will help you from the inside. Watch me now. Ganon din sa Diyos. Sa ating spiritual na pamumuhay, please listen to me, people of God. Kung mayroon ka mang ayusin na connection, Ito'y walang iba, kundi connection mo una sa Diyos. Why? Because God is the source of all things. He's the source of life. He's the source of blessings. Everything! God is the source. Halimbawa, mayroong Meralco, the source of, source ng power, Meralco. Pero Meralco, mayroon sila mga subcon, subcontractor. So ito mga subcontractor nila, kumukuha sa Meralco, Pero nagsusupply sila ng isang barangay. Nakuha ko, yung barangay kumukonekta sa kanila. Intindihin niyo mabuti. Sa oras na yung subcon, masira yung kanilang linya. Ang miral ko kailanman hindi mauubusan ng power. Yung subcon, pwedeng maubusan kung masira yung kanilang linya o yung kanilang makina. The moment na nakakonek ka lang sa, sa subcon, ano mangyayari? Ang miral ko po, ay palaging mayroong buhay, mayroong kuryente, pero dahil sa subcon ka nakakonek, ano mangyayari? Brown out ka din. Watch me now. Kung mayroon tayong connection na dapat ayusin, that is our divine connection. Yes, sinabi ko kanina, connect strongly and accurately to your pastor. Isusunod ko siya, no? Pero more than the connection that you have with your pastor, is your connection towards God. Tingnan mo ang iyong relasyon sa Diyos, kapatid. Mainit ka pa ba sa relasyon mo sa Diyos? Pinaparangalan mo ba ang Diyos sa lahat ng ginagawa mo o ginagamit mo lang siya para matupad ang mga pangarap mo? Maraming mga mananampalataya, ginagamit lang ang Diyos para matupad ang kanilang mga pangarap. And it will not work. Why? Because you can never deceive God. Di mo pwedeng isahan ng Diyos. Watch me now. Your relationship with God should be your priority. Number two, Anong kasunod na connection? Connection to the carrier of your grace. Watch me now. The moment you establish your connection to God, then God will give you a clear instruction. Psalm 77 verse 20, You lead your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Sa Tagalog, Awit 77 verse 20, magandang balita version, Ikaw o Diyos, ang nanguna sa iyong bayan o sa bayan mong parang kawan, si Moises at si Aaron, yaong iyong naging kamay. Naunawaan ho? I want you to understand. Once you are strongly and accurately connected to God, then God will begin to move. And God's hand will powerfully move over your life. And who is the hand of God in over your life? It is none other than your pastor. Nakita niyo ho? Pag malinaw na malinaw yung pagkakaintindi natin, walang kasabit-sabit to. Dere-derecho ang pag-grow natin, ang pag-mature natin, hanggang pag tayo nag-mature na din, the Lord will able, the Lord is now ready to release our inheritance. Kaya hindi ma-release-release yung inheritance. Una, walang divine connection sa Diyos. 
sa halip na magkaroon divine connection sa Diyos, sa halip na magpasakop sa Diyos, ang Diyos ang sinakop. Mabigat ang mensahe na sinasabi ko, sinasakop mo ang Diyos, bakit? Siya inuutusan mo eh. Mayroon kang sariling gusto, pinapaprobaan mo sa Kanya, as if naman mautusan mo siya. Diyos siya, ikaw ay tao. Kahit walang tao, nasasamba sa Kanya, mananatili sa Diyos. Ikaw na tao, pag wala ang Diyos at hindi siya kikilo sa buhay mo, at walang grasya na dumadaloy sa iyo, disgrasya ang abutin mo. So the moment you establish your connection to God, what comes next? Your connection to the carrier of your grace. Why? Because the carrier of your grace or your pastor serves as God's hand to you. Palit-ulit na ako, hindi pa rin maintindihan ng iba. Alam niyo ho, pag tuwing makikinig kayo, sasabihin niyo, ilang ulit mo na sinasabi yan, pero hindi mo ginagawa. Hindi rin ako magsasawa na ulit-ulitin sa iyo hanggang sa maalog ang kaisipan mo at utak mo para magbago. But the moment you keep on hardening your heart, then pay the price. Because once sa pinatigas ang puso mo ng Diyos, pag ang Diyos na nagpatigas ang puso ng isang tao, sa sobrang tigas ng ulo, tigas ng puso, the Lord will never speak to you. And once God never speak to a person, that person is cursed. Ayaw kasi natin ng ma maayos na pangaral eh. Ang gusto talaga natin yung uh, mga magbibigay lang sa atin ng excitement, inspiration, stop that. We need to face God with a clear conscience. The moment you establish your connection to God, what comes next? God, God's hand will move. Who is God's hand in your life on earth? The carrier of your grace in the church, none other than your pastor. Malinaw. Gusto mong kumilos ang kamay, ng, ang kamay ng Diyos na buhay sa buhay mo? Gusto mong maghimala ang kamay ng Diyos na buhay? Gusto mong kumilos? Gusto mong patibayin ka? Gusto mong bigyan ka ng success? Then strongly and accurately connect to the carrier of your grace na nada than your pastor. Period. No ifs, no buts. That's the protocol. You will not connect? Then no move. Kahit gaano pa katanding connection mo sa Diyos. Ikaw na rin ang nagtali at sinasabi mo sa kamay ng Diyos, huwag kang kumilos. Bakit? Because ayaw mong kilalanin yung carrier ng grace na ibinigay niya sa iyo. Pangatlo, connection to the church or the brethren. Dito pinapakita po sa atin, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another. Why we need to connect to our church? Because our church serves as our spiritual family. Minsan yung tatay, yung nanay, hindi available, may lakad. But if you have brothers keepers in the church, mahalaga ho, wag kayong mag-inarte at magsusulo. Ito ang ginagawa ng leon, para maintindihan nyo ha. Pag gutom ang leon at may nakita siyang grupo ng mga tupa, bubulabugin niya yan at magtatakbuhan yan. Yung mga nagtatakbuhan na sama-sama, hindi niya pupuntahan. Pero kung mayroong humiwalay, yun ang kanyang magiging hapunan. Nagkakaintindihan tayo? Even if how uh, downhearted you are, how offended you are, how hurt you are, kung ano mang kaartihan meron ka, never leave your church. You better stay with your church family. You better stay in the midst together with your brethren. Alam niyo bakit? Sa oras na ikaw ay lumabas sa church mo, Dahil lang sa na-offend ka, lumabas ka sa church mo, dahil lang sa pag-iinarte mo, sa katigasan ng ulo mo, ikaw na rin ang nagdalala sa sarili mo papunta sa paglapa sa iyo ng demonyo. Ganito na natin sabihin direkta para magkaroon kayo ng malinaw na pagkakaintindi. So the moment you leave your church, lalo na pag hindi ang Diyos ang nagpaalis sa iyo, gusto mo lang kasi nasaktan ka, Gusto mo lang kasi na-offend ka. Gusto mo lang kasi hindi mo na kinakaya yung salita ng Diyos. Mag-isip-isip ka ng hindi dalawa kundi limang daang beses bago mo gawin. Because if the church that you belong now is the church and the pastor of that church is really the shepherd of your soul at umalis ka, mi ultimo adios. Because you will pay the price at pag alis mo, automatic. Sabi sa akin palagi ng aking mentor, ang mga taong umaalis sa iglesia dahil sa kanilang sariling kapakanan at sariling pakiramdam ay magiging pulutan at pagpapiesta ng demonyo. At yun ang nangyayari 
sa maraming tao na matitigas ang ulo. I know, you know mga kapatid, sa mga panahong ito, while I'm preaching to you that this word, God impressed something in my heart. Stop being stubborn. Stop being hard-headed. Stop being, you know, uh, pagiging selfish, self-centered. Mga bida-bida. Feeling mo mahusay ka. Feeling mo magaling ka. Wala kang binatbat, kapatid, without the grace of God. Kahit ako, hindi rin ako pwede magbida-bida at hindi rin ako pwede mag-inarte at sasabihin ko kaya ko. Because I need the grace of God. And the grace of God can only be found in the life of my spiritual father, spiritual mentor. That is why somebody is mentoring me. I am connected to God. I am connected to the one na spiritual father ko, spiritual, uh, spiritual mentor ko. That is why I was able to access these powerful messages in the life of my mentor na idiniposito naman ng Diyos sa buhay niya. And then I am connected to the church where I belong. In fact, ako yung pastor sa church. Okay? I am connected to my tribe, school of church builder. Mayroon din akong grupo ng mga pastor na kinakonektahan. We, we share the word of God. Ito ko kahalaga eh. Because the moment na yung input na natanggap mo hindi galing sa Diyos, the moment na yung connection mo ay hindi maka-Diyos, then contamination will begin to enter. At pag yung contamination pumasok sa iyo, then a contaminated mind will become a playground of the devil. Because kahit na ano pang pangangaral ng pastor mo, kahit na ano pang pangangaral ng grace career mo, hindi mo na maintindihan. Alam mo bakit? Because you are now being contaminated by the system of the world. Palagi kong sinasabi, kung kayo ay mayroong kailangang payo, ulitin ko, pag may payo kay kailangan, nagkakaloko-loko na yung buhay mo, nagkawindang-windang ng buhay mo, humingi ka ng payo na makadiyos. At yung makadiyos na payo, matatagpuan mo lang yan sa pastor mo. Pangalawa, kung wala pastor mo, pumunta ka sa mga brother's keeper mo, mga kapwa mo mananampalataya. Anong klase? Kasi hindi naman lahat pare-parehas ang uh, maturity sa loob ng church. Yung mga mananampalataya na alam mong konektado sa pastor mo, sumusunod sa pastor mo, sumusuporta sa pastor mo, may respeto sa pastor mo, nag-o-honor sa pastor mo. Yan ang mga konsultahin mo. Kasi pag nagbigay ng payo, katulad na katulad sa pastor mo. Bakit? Like father, like son. Malinaw. Kaya wag kang mag-disconnect. Una sa Diyos. Naku, Panginoon. Pag sa Diyos ka mag-disconnect, para mo nang kinitil ang buhay mo niyan. Sa Diyos, konektado ka. Unahin mo yan. Tuwing gising mo sa umaga, Diyos mo nang kausapin mo. Then pangalawa, gagalaw na ang Diyos sa buhay mo kasi konektado ka sa Kanya. Gagamitin niya, pastor mo. Pag ang pastor mo nangaral na matalas, na-offend ka, nasaktan ka, wag kang mag-react. Bakit? Isa lang ibig sabihin, pag may mali ka, at ikaw ay tinutumbok ng Diyos yung pagkakamali mo, tinatamaan ka, magpasalamat ka dahil mahal ka niya. Then pangatlo, huwag kang bumita, huwag kang umalis sa iglesia mo. Kasi yung church na kinabibilangan mo, diyan ka na Lord nila, kahit hindi kamali sa paglagay sa iyo, magstay ka dyan. Kahit na ikay nahihirapan, kahit wala ka naramdam, magstay ka. Kasi para, para kayo mga baga sa loob ng church. Ulitin ko, parang baga sa loob ng church. Pag nag-aapoy yung mga baga, yung isang baga na, na mahina, wala nang apoy, pag yan ay naisama sa mga baga na nag-aapoy, mag-aapoy ka rin. Yan ang ibig kong sabihin. Connect to the church, connect to the church, connect to the brethren. Para kang ikaw nangihina, makakasama mo yung mga maiinit na mga brethren, lalo na yung mga strongly and accurately connected sa pastor mo. Ano mangyayari? Pati ikaw na malamig pa sa nguso ng aso, ikaw ay iinit din. Bakit? Pag ang kasama mo mga maiinit sa Diyos, wala kang choice kundi uminit din sa paglilingkod sa Diyos. Pero pag kasama mo mga marites, marites ba yan? Mga chismosa, yung mga kasama mo, mga walang kwenta, mga pinagagawa, kristyano daw, pero hindi nakikita sa buhay, lalamunin kayo lahat at magiging food for the devil kayo. I am preaching this message to you, mga kapatid, from my heart. Because this is what really happens. In the last days, the devil will no longer, you know, he has no power. But the devilish wickedness, sinfulness, na kanyang naitanim sa buhay ng mga tao. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, ang kalaban natin sa bandang huli ay hindi na ho demonyo at mundo, kundi ang kasamaan ng bawat tao. Kung sa panahon at sa mga sandaling ito, mayroong kapampagkakataon na makapag-isip 
na magbago ka ng iyong paraan, mabuhay ka at patayin ang lahat ng nasa ng laman. At magsimula ka ng lumakad sa katuwiran sa kabanalan. Nagpaparangal sa Diyos, ina-access mo ang grasya ng Diyos para magawa mo ang kanyang pinagawa at marating mo ang gusto niyang marating mo. Then, your life will become a blessing. First to God. Second to your spiritual father. And third to your church. And the moment you are flourishing, you blossom, you become the planting of the Lord in your church, then it will be easy for you to win the unbelievers. Because even if you do not share your testimony to them, your life will become a light. A light is very attractive in the midst of darkness. Yung iba, salita ng salita, share ng share. Hindi nga konektado sa Diyos, hindi konektado sa pastor, magsishare ka pa. Saan ka kumuha ng lakas ng loob? Because the moment you share something good, people will not automatically believe in you. They will look at your, they will find the words that you're sharing to them in your life. Ngayon, pag hindi ka konektado, ano, anong saysay? Saan ka kumuha ng lakas ng loob? Mag-share ng ganyan. Nagkaunawaan tayo? Okay? So, yung biblical protocol about God's grace, God, the grace giver. Para malinaw sa atin, ha? ang protocol ng God's grace, God is the grace giver. Alinaw? He's the grace giver. Your pastor is the grace carrier. Nakita nyo, binigyan ko ng distinction ha, para hindi kayo malito. Ang author at may-ari at magbibigay ng grace, Diyos. Pero hindi na Diyos direktang binibigay sa mananampalataya. Hindi niya direktang binibigay sa church. Dineposito niya ito sa buhay ng pastor sa church na yon. Kung saan, mo, saan ka nakabilang. Ang tawag sa pastor mo ngayon, grace carrier. And the church or the brethren are the grace receiver. Grace receiver doesn't receive the church or the grace from God directly. They will access the grace or God's grace in the life of their grace carrier, which is their pastor. The church or the brethren is the grace receiver or the storehouse to dispense, watch me now, to dispense to the people who are in need of Christ. Mula sa Diyos ang grasya, kapangyarihan at abilidad niya para magawa mo pinapagawa niya, marating mo ang gusto niyang marating mo sa kanyang plano at purpose sa buhay mo, idideposito niya ngayon sa buhay ng isang tao na siyang nagpapastor sa iyo. Ang gagawin mo, ulitin ko, tumingin ka sa akin, huwag kang pumikit, ang una mong gawin, establish mong connection mo sa Diyos. Kasi once may establish mong connection mo sa Diyos, ang kanyang lingkod na depositore ng kanyang grace ay uutusan niya ngayon na i-release yung grace sa iyo. Ngayon, kung hindi ka konektado sa Diyos, hindi ka rin konektado sa pastor mo, anong grasya ang meron ka? Disgrasya madalas. Malinaw na. At ay pag hindi mo na-receive ang grace, wala ka rin grace na may dispense sa mga taong hindi pa nanampalita sa kay Kristo. Kaya that is why, yung mga hindi connected sa kanilang pastor, hindi nakaka-access ng God's grace, walang kakayahan, walang lakas ng loob na magbahagi ng salita ng Diyos sa ibang tao. Bagkos, inaatupag lang kanilang sarili, habang inaatupag ang kanilang sarili para nakatayo sa kumunoy, na habang sila'y gumagalaw, lalong lumulubog. You know what I'm saying. If you're listening to me right now, and you know yourself, you are not connected strongly and accurately to your pastor, kahit na saan ka pang lupalop nagpunta at ano pa man ang plano mo, all your plans, all your effort are tantamount to failure. Magugulat ka na lang isang araw, bakit nagsikap naman ako? Bakit ito ang naging resulta? Bakit? Kasi inignore mo ang salita ng Diyos na narinig mo. Bagkos nagbibida-bida ka at feeling mo, ikaw ang carrier ng grace. <laughs> This grace ang aabutin mo. Maganda nang ganito natin sabihin at tingnan natin sa bandang huli kung ang pangangaral talaga na ito ay totoo at ito ay mayroong biblical reference, Ephesians 3.2, For you have heard the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. 
the grace that God had deposited in the life of your pastor is not for him. It is for the people under his leadership. So if you are under a leadership of a pastor, you're the God's, God's grace that you need for you to overcome, for you to become what God wants you to be, to, for you to do what God wants you to do, is already deposited in the life of your pastor. So kailangan mo nalang mag-connect, huwag magbida-bida, magpasakop na, rumispeto na, mag-honor na, para mag-breakthrough na. Pag hindi ka mag-connect, hindi ka mag-honor, hindi ka mag-respect sa career ng grace mo, instead of breaking through, God will break you. Or the devil will break you. Another prescription, biblical prescription, on how to defeat the flesh. Letter I, be willing to update and upgrade your spiritual stature. Papunta na tayo sa growth. You want to defeat the flesh? Then, be willing to update and upgrade your spiritual stature. We need to keep on learning so that we will keep on growing. And the moment we keep on growing, then we keep on maturing in our faith. And as we keep on maturing in our faith, we are also establishing our spiritual stature. What is stature? It is your standing before God. I'll give you some powerful biblical example. Abraham was a man of stature. Before God, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. Ang sabi niya sa kanyang sarili, Shall I hide from my servant Abraham? Who is Abraham? Na kailangan ng Diyos magpaalam sa kanya. In Diyos naman ay makapangyarihan. A man of his stature is a man respected in heaven. That when God wants to do something, He will inform the man of stature. A man of his stature is a man respected in heaven. What he says, the heaven respond. Nagkaintindihan tayo. That is why mahalaga na isa sa biblical prescription on how to defeat the flesh is for us to upgrade and update our spiritual stature. If you think that you are already growing now, Marami ka pang maibubuga na lalo ka pang lumago. Because what you are now should not be the same tomorrow. Because our God is a progressive God. Our God is keep on progressing. That is why kung tayo ay sumusunod sa Diyos ng accurate, accessing God's grace in the life of our pastor, we should also be progressing. Pag sinasabing you are progressing in the spirit, you are growing and maturing in the spirit, establishing your stature. Because a man of stature is a man respected in heaven. And if you are a man respected in heaven, just like Elijah, at my word, there will be no rain. And at my word, rain will fall. Para praising. Ibig sabihin, kung hindi ko sasabihin na ulan, hindi ulan. Ganun katindi yung man of stature. Ano lang ibig ko sabihin? Bakit nagiging man of stature si Elijah? Bakit naging man of stature si Abraham? Because of their obedience to God. Because they defeated the flesh. When God told Abraham, go there. Abraham doesn't question. Abraham did not question God. Abraham did not reason with God. He just go there. Tagalogin ko, punta ka doon. Kung tayo yun, magtatanong tayo, Lord, saan doon? Be specific, please. Si Abraham mo lang ganun. And it is very discomforting. Grabe ang discomfort na dala sa flesh noon. Because you will go in a place na you do not know. But Abraham was called by God the father of faith. Why? Because he trusted God without a shadow of doubt. And that is another way of defeating the flesh. Kung saan sila ni Sarah aabutin ng gabi, nagtatayo si Abraham ng tent, at doon sila natutulog. Every day they wake up, they just move with, through the guidance of God. Ganun lang. Walang tanong. Nakita niyo ho? A man of stature obeyed God without any question, without a shadow of doubt, 
a man of stature, willing to surrender and submit their lives to God, and they are under God's disposal. Ito ang problema sa atin. Maraming mananampalataya, gusto bawat galaw, sigurado. Well, kung ganyan ang ugali mo, kapatid, tapos born again ka, Christian ka, tapos bawat galaw mo, gusto mo sigurado, ano ibig sabihin? Hindi po qualified ang mga sigurista sa pag operate sa pananampalataya. Ang mga sigurista ay hindi po qualified na lumakad at pag operate sa pananampalataya. Kasi hindi ang Diyos naghahanap ng sigurista. Naghahanap ang Diyos ng mga handang sumunod sa Kanya kahit na wala silang nakikitang kasiguruhan. Why? Kasi kung ikaw ay susunod sa Diyos at sigurista ka na tiyak mo na yung pupuntahan mo, hindi faith ang tawag doon. Security ang tawag dyan. But the moment you follow God and you just allow yourself to be under His disposal and you just believe in His wisdom, you just trust in put and put your confidence in His character. That is faith. Because God is faith and faith is God. Nagkaw naman tayo? Ito ang hindi magets ng marami. Because we are trying to follow God and having the security in us. You know, living by faith is trusting God. Yun lang ho ang ibig sabihin ng faith. Living by faith is trusting God no matter what happens. Moses, when they were trapped at the, on the, at the Red Sea, he trusted God. And God made a way. Watch me now. You will become a man of stature if you are not seeking for the safety of yourself. Because yourself is the flesh wants safety always. But the moment you walk in the Spirit, the safety of the Spirit is putting His confidence in the character of God. Deliberately, with or without clarity, with or without assurance, with or without light, faith says, faith is the light in the midst of darkness. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the things you do not see. Faith is the assurance that the battle had been won already. Ang faith ay kakaiba. Hindi mo pa nakita, pero pinapaniwalaan mo na. At ang faith ay hindi dependent sa circumstances. Ang faith ay hindi dependent sa situations. Faith is dependent on God, period. If situation says, no hope at all, faith says, there is hope in God. If the situation says, you're about to die, then faith says, in Christ we live, in Him we live, and move, and have our being. See the difference? When the world says crisis, faith says, in the economy of heaven, crisis is not found in the vocabulary of heaven. There is only one thing in heaven, written in the vocabulary of heaven, and it is called prosperity. When the world says it is impossible, faith says, with God, all things are possible. Friends, be a man of stature. Grow, update, upgrade your stature before God so that the moment we become a man of stature, we will be respected in heaven and we will be partakers of God's revelations in order for us to understand that life on earth is highly favored, highly blessed, super blessed, and secured in the hands of of the living God. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. What is the encouragement? What is the recommendation of Apostle Peter to all believers? But grow in the grace and knowledge of whom? Of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Anong kailangan natin gawin? Patuloy tayong lumago sa grasya ng Diyos. Ibig sabihin, patuloy tayong mag-connect sa career ng grace natin. Patuloy tayong mag-connect sa Diyos sa career ng grace natin. Mag-connect sa church, sa ating mga brother's keeper. At patuloy tayong lumago sa kaalaman. Let us continue to grow in the knowledge of who God is. Grow in the knowledge of what God can do. Grow in the knowledge of, of the things about God. Malina ho, mga kapatid. And if this happens, what comes next? As you grow in the grace, as you grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more we become like Him. And the moment we become like Him, then we will duplicate His victory against the enemy and destroy all the works of the devil. This is the word of God for all of us today. Be a man of stature. Upgrade, update your spiritual stature so that you will be able to receive the fresh word and revelation from God, just like Abraham. Before God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, He said to Himself, Shall I hide my plans from Abraham? A man of stature. God, di ba napakaganda, no? As you grow in the grace, as you grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more He reveals Himself to you, to us, the more He reveals His plans to us, the more He reveals His revelations to us, then we will become a man of stature, a man of spirit, a man of wisdom, and a man of knowledge. And if these things happen, then welcome to an open heaven, welcome to the move and leading of God Holy Spirit, and welcome to a pleasing life, because a pleasing life keeps the heavens open. Let us defeat the flesh, because the flesh is now beginning to adopt the environment of the Spirit, and beginning to like and long and desires the presence of God. And if this happens, then both your spirit, soul, and body will be sanctified by God, will be made holy by God, so that we will become a vessel of honor, advancing the kingdom, dominating the kingdom of this world to become the kingdom of our Lord, and setting the captives free, and letting them receive, let them receive the now word of God and eternal life, so that we will see each other in heaven, and we shall be with God forever and ever. And the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen. Your table will never run out of food. There will always be food at your table. Those who are sick, receive your healing. Those who are in need, receive your provision. Those who are confused, receive the peace from God. And those who are suffering right now, receive God's comfort over your life. I rebuke those pains. I rebuke those sickness. I rebuke all disturbance in your body from the top of your head unto the sole of your feet. I release divine healing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people of God declare, Amen and Amen and Amen. Shalom! To you and your family Wish you a Merry Christmas Let it be full of 
Jesus, so let's come together now. 